If you're getting ready to relocate to Florida or maybe just planning a visit to the Sunshine State and you're not familiar with the area and want to make sure that you don't get yourself into a bad or maybe uncomfortable situation, well, I'm going to give you a list of what not to do in Florida. And even if you're a recurring visitor and just need a few reminders, I got you covered as well. So stick around. Hey everyone, I'm Stephanie Durham with the Widomore Group at EXP Realty right here in the Destin for Walton Beach area. If this is your first time to our channel, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button and tap on that bell just so you're notified every time we do a new video because we wouldn't want you to miss out on all the information that we give you about our area. Uh, so if you are getting ready to relocate to the Destin or Walton Beach or surrounding areas, please don't hesitate to reach out to us here at the Widomore Group. Uh, you can give us a phone call, send us a text, or shoot us an email, and we will be more than happy to help you uh, with all the information that you need to relocate here to the area and have a smooth transition uh, because we do have a lot of people that reach out to us uh, for all the information that they personally need to make their uh, transition as smooth as possible so we want to make sure that we get you covered as well all right so what not to do in florida so number one if you are visiting, please don't forget to check the weather forecast before making your way down here. Uh, you want to make sure, especially between June 1st and November 30th when hurricane season, that you don't uh, run into a storm uh, at the same time that you have your trip planned. Uh, so just make sure that there's nothing brewing uh, or projected to come to the area that you plan on visiting. There may be a storm out there brewing in the Atlantic or in the Gulf of Mexico. Um, we'll probably see some storms that are out there but not projected to head towards Florida. It might head up more north or over east or even west, but just make sure that you check that before you plan because I'd hate for your whole trip to be ruined by thunderstorms and rains and strong winds, hurricanes, baby. Um, there's lots of activities in Florida to enjoy indoors, but I'm sure if you are planning a trip down here, you have a lot of outdoor activities planned as well. So please don't forget to check the weather forecast before you have your trip, uh, your family trip down here because we wouldn't want that to be ruined by all the, uh, the storms that may be projected to head this way. Number two, please don't interfere with wildlife. I know uh, from other areas coming to Florida, you might see some uh, awesome looking animals that you may not be used to seeing, but just make sure, especially alligators or, or snakes, uh, baby cubs, just don't don't interfere with them. Mind your business, just like they're trying to mind their own too. We wouldn't want you or your family to get injured or you just want to interfere with their, their natural habitat. Um, that's what zoos are for. If you do want to feel, you know, have uh, animal exhibits where you can feed animals, uh, but just make sure if you're out and about and you, you come across paths with any of the wildlife, just make sure you leave them alone just for your safety and for theirs. Number three, don't forget your sunscreen. I mean, we are the sunshine state, so it, uh, the sunshine is out even on rainy days sometimes. So uh, if the sun can be very brutal. The humidity is real too. So if you sunburn easy, or even if you're not sure, if you're from up north and you're not used to wearing sunscreen, make sure you pack it anyway and lather it up. We wouldn't want you to walk around uh, all burnt and crisp and uncomfortable during your stay here. Of course, us locals, some of us can be a little hard-headed too and, and think that we don't need sunscreen, when in fact we do, because the sun is the sun and it's gonna do what it does uh, to our skin. So we should make sure you protect yourself and don't forget that sunscreen. Number four, try not to get around without using a GPS. Uh, even as a local resident of Florida, I do rely heavily on my GPS to get around, especially when I'm showing properties in areas that I'm not familiar with. I don't know what I do without GPS, because if I make a wrong turn, at least GPS will reroute me and tell me the direction I need to go in order to get right back on track or maybe even a, an alternate route to get to where I'm going. So I can only imagine what uh, people that, that are not from the area can go through when they get lost and have no idea where they're going uh, or not familiar with the back streets, but just make sure especially with all the extra roads or the bigger cities like Orlando or Miami, make sure that you do have access to a GPS uh, or some sort of system that will help you get around because it won't want you to spend uh, most of your day just getting lost and trying to find where you're going when you could be out enjoying some of the fun activities that you had planned. Number five, don't forget the flip-flops. Uh, even if you're not used to wearing flip-flops, get used to wearing them in Florida because they're so convenient and so comfy, especially if you plan on going to the beach. You don't want to walk out on the beach with your sneakers on and just get them filled with sand, or of course with the heat, you don't want your feet to get all uh, 
smothered in your sneakers and, and get all funky. But flip flops is just the big part of life here in Florida, especially for me. I like to wear them until the winter time to where I really just can't bear the feel of my toes getting numb because it did get a little cold. Uh, but we do see a lot of local residents wearing flip flops even in the winter time because that's just our in our nature to be comfortable regardless of the weather. Uh, it's just very convenient to wear, especially if you're just going from maybe from the beach straight to a restaurant. At least you have shoes that you can slip on very quickly. Um, but if you even if you don't have flip flops or, or able to purchase them where you're from, there are several stores here in Florida, almost every store, even dollar stores or big retail stores that will be able to, to sell them to you. So just make sure that you do have plans to pack or buy some flip flops. And number six, don't assume that all beaches are nude beaches. So if you do plan on walking around as a free bird, make sure you check into the local area, find a place where that is allowed. Uh, you don't wanna walk around the beach and come across a family where they get super offended because they have small children with them or if you are in your birthday suit in a prohibited area, you might end up leaving a nothing but a set of handcuffs. Uh, so if you do plan on wearing your birthday suit out on the beach, make sure you check into the rules in the area, make sure that it is allowed so you don't get into any trouble. Number seven, do not drive slow in the left lane. And that pretty much goes for everywhere, not just Florida. So that's just for your safety and everyone else's. Of course, there's not just the tourists in the crowded areas. There's a lot of local residents too, just trying to get to where they need to go, whether it's to work or they're trying to get their kids from school. Uh, they don't want to be throwing off someone that's driving below the speed limit and end up causing a, a rear end collision or any other sort of accident. Uh, so if you are not familiar with the area or you just generally like to drive slower than the speed limit, just get over in the right lane. Or if you need to pull over, if you need time to figure out where it is that you're trying to go. Um, but again, for your safety and everyone else's, do not drive slow in the left lane you also don't want to cause road rage by other people that absolutely cannot stand that number eight do not buy tickets of any sort from a street vendor uh, what i mean by that is that you might plan on going to disney world or universal or any other uh, well-known parks in florida uh, but they are super expensive for a lot of families so uh, if you feel like someone selling them on the street has a great discount that's within your budget uh, don't assume that they're legit tickets so we wouldn't want you to buy those tickets at a discount and then end up getting to the theme park realizing that you can't even get in because they are not legit tickets uh, so just make sure that you don't purchase any of your your fun tickets at uh, from a street vendor number nine don't assume that an establishment is filthy because you saw one palmetto bug. I've seen a lot of reviews uh, for restaurants or hotel rooms where someone said the place was just completely gross because they saw the one palmetto bug. It's very common because, I mean, it's Florida in this area, you're gonna see them, whether a place is spotless or, or maybe needs a little cleaning, doesn't matter. Uh, you don't wanna just put down an establishment because of that. It's very natural to see palmetto bugs. A lot of people just will, will call them roaches, uh, but that doesn't necessarily mean that the place is just built so I'd hate for a lot of our awesome businesses to get put down because of the one palmetto bug when it's very natural a sight to, to see them in our area so just don't assume that an establishment is completely gross because you see a palmetto bug and number 10 very important do not ignore the beach flag warnings when you go to the beach make sure that you understand what each flag means so if you do see a green flag out that means there's low hazards so there's calm conditions out in the water but you still need to make sure you exercise caution if you see yellow flags there's medium hazards so there's moderate surf or moderate currents so it's still safe for you to be out there and enjoy your time in the water now if you see red flags there's high hazards so it's high surf and or strong currents so uh, you could it's probably better for you to stay out the water but if not just make sure you uh, use extreme caution while you're out there now if you see double red flags the water is closed to the public meaning it is not safe to be in there uh, so make sure if you do see the double red flags you can still stay on the beach stay on the sand but do not go in the water and if you see a purple flag out that just means that there's marine pest presence so you may come across jellyfish or stingrays or other dangerous fish uh, if you don't want to get stung just stay out of the water while you see the purple flags out well, that's all I have for you today on what not to do in Florida. If you have any questions or want to share your thoughts, feel free to leave us a comment below. And don't forget to like and share this video with anyone you know that may be getting ready to relocate here to Florida or maybe planning a visit. Again, I'm Stephanie Durham with the Widomer Group at EXP Realty. I'll see you guys next time. Take care.